our Air Pollution Control Board meeting. And then after the Air Pollution Control Board, we'll go ahead and go to closed session and uh, adjourn from there. Uh, County Council, are you expecting an announcement from closed session? No, we don't. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and uh, go to our Air Pollution Meeting, Air Pollution Control Board meeting, and then to closed session and adjournment.
go ahead and call this meeting to order. Thank you for your patience. Um, we'll go ahead, the first item on the agenda. I will, we'll start with the, uh, the first item on the agenda is swearing in of uh, both our two new members. We want to welcome uh, uh, a representative from the city of Fillmore, Gail Washburn, and uh, Carmen Ramirez from the city of Oxford. Good morning. Aye. We'll both of raise your right hand. Aye. Aye. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies and foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome. Um, you do great work here and look forward to your participation. Um, that being said, we'll move to uh, Madam Clerk, the roll call. Supervisor Long? Supervisor Bennett? Here. Supervisor Foy? Here. Mayor Morgan? Here. Supervisor Parks? Here. Council Member Ramirez? I'm here. Council Member Sharkey? Present. Mayor Washburn? Here. And Supervisor Saragosa? Here. Okay, and I'm here too. Maybe you mentioned my name. <laughs> um, You're only the chair. I'm hiding behind this. Uh, the okay, uh, item four is the Pledge of Allegiance. Rise. Call me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. The next order of business is the, uh, the minutes from our February, from the January 11th and February 1st meeting. Oh, it is? Okay, thank you. Move we'll to continue. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Got it. We'll go ahead and continue it. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll move to the consent item. Any, uh, I guess, agenda review. Anybody want to move anything around on the agenda? No. Okay, see none. Thank you. Board comments, Madam Clerk. Do we have any public uh, comment cards uh, this time? None. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have the consent agenda. Move approval. Second. Okay. Any opposition? Probably some abstentions. No. Okay. Should I abstain? Um, no, I apologize. Okay. No, apologize. No, we're okay. I see no uh, objections. I'm curious. Move to our um, item 11. Our executive our director. Chair Brennan, Mr. Viegas, members of the board. You. I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. Is your microphone on? Staff is proposing the second phase of our district's management, reorganization, and secession plan. When fully implemented, this reorganization will reduce district expenditures for salaries and benefits by approximately $150,000 per year. Currently, the Compliance Division, Engineering Division, and Monitoring Division report to Mr. Keith Duvall, the Deputy Air Pollution Control Officer. <laughs> Mr. Duvall is planning to retire at the end of June of this year. Therefore, it's time to implement the second and final phase of our secession planning and management reorganization. We would create two additional managers. One would manage the compliance division, and one would take over the new planning and rules division. The proposed manager of compliance would have a salary that is 15% higher than the salary of a supervising air quality specialist, and the manager of the planning and rules division would have a salary 15% higher in the supervising engineer position. The current staff position of the member, and these would be internal promotions promoted to the manager of compliance, would not be eliminated and would need to be filled. In order, however, to accrue the salary savings that we're aiming for, we would unfund and, and out of the budget one air quality specialist position in the compliance division, and that position is currently vacant at this time. The reason we're not proposing to delete it at this time, and I generally prefer to do that, is that we've got work coming from AB 32, the Global Warming Solutions Act, and 
right now we're actually I'll be heading up to Sacramento to negotiate with ARB on a memorandum of understanding and how to implement some of these programs and they will come with revenue for the district to implement the program so if we take on this additional work it looks like we'll be needing that position in the future but it would come with revenue this recruitment for the compliance manager would occur in the second quarter of this year for the manager of planning and rules the current staff position of the member of the person promoted to this position would be eliminated and this promotion would not occur at least until the third quarter of the year we will first complete the manager for compliance division recruitment as we will need to have a transition period with the deputy air pollution control officer after the retirement of mr. Duvall the position of deputy air pollution control officer would be deleted with the four division manager positions which are filled internally replacing the deputy air pollution control officer I'd like to point out again that we would be saving hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually in salaries and benefits we would have a management structure that of a professional bureaucracy which is common for smaller professional organizations the four line managers would report directly to me the air pollution control officer your board standing committee reviewed this proposal at their January 11th meeting and recommended approval by your board that's all I have I'll be happy to answer questions I just pleasure just a comment you know Mike you always uh, find a way to restructure and do it to always find a way to save money and I just really appreciate you finding this opportunity to do this too in this so and, and going through the restructuring hope everybody else can take example in all the different departments to do this so thank you well I have to say that if the second phase works as well as the first phase we've got two new managers in place and they are really uh, doing a great job and they're they're finding one is finding potential for cost savings that I'm going to be coming back to your board in the future with. so it's, it's well, we're certainly going to miss Mr. Duvall. He's got a breadth of knowledge that's going to be very difficult to replace. We do have some young talent in the district. Mr. Chen. Yes, please. You know, I think the important thing, too, is that uh, with the reorganization, there's a uh, salary savings of 150000 that you mentioned, and that's very significant, too. So thank you for a good job. Mayor Morgan. I have one question. I agree with uh, Mr. Foy here that you, you've done a great job in trying to Make sure we get cuts when we need them. But I want to know how much more work it's going to cause you. It's going to cause some additional work to me. Mm -hmm. However, one of the th one of the right now I'm directly managing the planning, rules, and, and the incentive programs. By combining those and having a manager over there, that'll actually reduce some of my workload. Because right now I'm actually attending all the advisory committee uh, meetings, working on the minutes with staff on that, and it, so I, I will get some reduction. Okay. But some increases. It'll be a slight uptick. That's not bad. No. That's 150,000. Cuts his own work. That's, That's right. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's cutting it, but there'll be some offsets. I think it's going up. It's called reorganizing. Reorganizing. Yeah, I just had a brief comment, not a question. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Mike um, several years ago when I served on the advisory committee, and it is a well-run organization, very efficient, and. Um, I'm, I've been happy to, to work with you in the past, and I look forward to working with you in the future. I have one comment, though, one but, <laughs> and that is that you have more staff than our entire city government. <laughs> and I just wanted to point that out. So, anyway, thanks for your, for your service. Okay. I don't see no more questions. Pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any opposite? We used to have a lot more staff. <laughs> uh, seeing no opposition, uh, motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, item 12. Uh, and is that who's, that's, uh, who's handling the next item? Oh, John. Mr. Nick. Chairman Brown and members of the board, what we have is the adoption of the modification of the management and confidential clerical unrepresented employees. This provides for the APCD to be updated with the most recent changes that were made by the county. One is to provide the long-term disability as being available to part-time employees. The second makes the change in the 30-year incentive program. As you are aware, we have employees, when they reach 30 years, if they've been here long enough, they're not obligated to continue to pay their retirement. 
what this does is provide what we have done with every other bargaining unit. As the incentive for regular employees goes down, as the cost of retirement is our portion goes down, so also does the incentive. The idea is that a 30-year employee is not to pay any more or any less than a regular employee for the provision of their retirement. This provides for that, since the regular employees picked up 3% of their retirement. 30-year employee would now get a 3% reduction in the incentive value of having been here over 30 years. And the last is to reflect the new classifications that were authorized by your board today. Mike has done a marvelous job of using structural succession planning. He's flattened his organization and he's distributed responsibility. I would be very grateful if I could get all 26 agencies to approach theirs in the same thoughtful fashion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hint, everybody. Listen. Well, Mr. Nick, well, if on. anybody could, it's you. <laughs> That's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Pleasure of the board. Question? Okay. Uh, okay. Second. Uh, no opposition. Uh, motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. To item 13. Oh, this is the unaudited financial status report for the current fiscal year. The financial status and year-end projection reports for the past due grants are included in attachment to the board letter, and they do not affect the district's bottom line, since budgeted expenditures, including any rollover encumbrances, have corresponding revenue. And these are just state pass-through monies that the district handles for our Carl Moyer school bus replacement, except those type of programs. On the district's operations side, we're estimating that we will receive a, achieve a net savings of $87,000 at the end of the fiscal year. Total realized revenue will be below adjusted, the re, adjusted revenue in the budget by approximately $58,000. Although we did have additional revenue of about $90,000 from fines, it was offset by an increase uh, sorry, excuse me, a projected decrease in our money that we're receiving from permit renewals because we have some facilities that have shut down, most notably a nation corporation. As for on the operating expenditure side, estimates are below adjusted appropriations by $650,000. Salaries and benefits expenditure will be about $251,000 under budget due to salary and benefit savings from the vacancy of one air quality specialist position an increase in retirement contribution rates and lower vacation ride buy-down rates. The services and supplies expenditure object will be approximately $99,000 under budget due to projects that are either being reevaluated, completed in-house, or carried over to the next fiscal year. We do not anticipate using the $300,000 contingency for the remainder of the fiscal year. And it, it sounds great, and we're headed, once again, in the right direction. I just want to, as a precautionary note, that right now, with, with, when you, you know, the negotiations going on between Congress, the administration, you know, the House and the Senate, uh, with the federal budget, there could be an impact to the district's federal grant. And it's something that, you know, in, in the past, uh, Democrats have been pushing to increase the grant, and the, the administration has been firmly behind that. Uh, Republicans in the past have been very good about not trying to reduce funds that go directly to the states. And so we'll just have to see how this all plays out. And I think if it was playing out over a longer term, I'd be more confident. But it seems that they're going to be negotiating a very compressed time frame. Yes. Do you see that if they're going to reduce the possible grants coming to us, are they also going to do some of the regulations? <laughs> <laughs> no no man, uh, mandates without funds? I, I can't imagine. You know, right now the administration, they're, they're looking at tightening the, the air pollution, national ambient air quality standard for ozone or smog, which is our non-attainment issue in this county. And so that would certainly be additional workload for the district. And I, that's actually why the administration proposed uh, an increase in the federal grant. But I, I don't, I, I see potential there could be a cut and we'd still see an, a tighter small standard in the future. Member um, Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Villegas, I'm, I'm new to the board as you know. 
and we did have a review of basic things a couple weeks ago, or was it just last week? And I, I wanted to just ask you a question I probably asked you before, and that is in the specifically in the state budget, we know it's very much up in the air. If there are any things that you could see specifically that might impact our your budget, our budget? Well, on the state side, uh, we receive approximately $200,000, just under $200,000 from state subvention. It's a per capita, in essence, grant to the districts. It's been stable even through the state budget crisis. Uh, if they need to seek another $12.5 billion in cuts, it's <laughs> hard to say what could happen. What, uh, follow up, what, uh, what impact? I see that we have savings projected. Yes. Is that something that can be used for shortfall from state? Absolutely. Funds? Okay. And okay. right now, just for your edification, the district does have a substantial fund balance. Uh, we've had four years of uh, significant net savings, much higher than $87,000. And our fund, we're about two times the upper bound of our fund balance target. Great. And actually, the district's looking at almost 100 percent reserves. Okay. Yes, Mayor Washburn. Yes, Mike. You refer to a reduction or decrease in emission fees attributable to closure of several permitted stationary source facilities. Could you kind of give me an idea of what those facilities were? That we oh, one, one one the significant one was over forty thousand dollars was the Imation plant shut down in Camarillo, and that was they consolidated their operations at another site out of state. Okay. And it was something that I guess <laughs> Mike Morgan can speak to, but I think we, we saw coming many years ago. It seemed every year they were reducing staff. Uh, cutting production, and just over time they finally uh, moved their production operations, I believe, to Oklahoma. And in speaking of those folks, it wasn't just to consolidate. There were expenses in California that hurt them, and they knew they could do it cheaper in one state and in Mexico. There's two different places they went to. <coughs> it was unfortunate because it, it was a state-of-the-art plant here. It certainly was. Certainly, from the air pollution standpoint, the other ones we're seeing is there were some engines, what we call tier zero engines, diesel engines, large diesel engines that were old enough that, that we couldn't, they couldn't receive uh, statewide registration from the state. But so we were permitting them until basically the start of this year when they had to be replaced, and so some of those engines came off permit. Thanks. Okay. Um, this is a receiving file. Uh, second by Member Sharpton. Okay. Uh, no opposition. Move to the next item. Uh, item 14, receiving file, the Public Information Division report. Just real quickly, you attached to the board letter is the report. As you can see, with the, with the staff of one, the district still manages to have quite a robust public outreach program, uh, numerous speaking engagements, numerous public events, and uh, it, you know, it's a credit to Ms. Barbara Page that she's done a great job. And not only that, but award-winning public outreach material. And if you have any question, Barbara Page is here to answer. See, now, now, there's just a quick comment. I think outreach is important. I think certainly, especially to the different organizations, uh, the NGOs, the, certainly the Lung Association, Heart Association. I mean, basically, we deal with things here, but we need to realize where, how it steps out and what we're doing is affecting you know, people are being affected by the air quality. And so I really appreciate the work, Barbara, you've done. Uh, the movie and, uh, has really woke people up to what really an air shed is, and I think that's important. We're dealing with that in the watershed where people are waking up and going, everything's connected to a lot of things, and I think this is very appropriate to keep out there. So thank you. Uh, yes. um, just one last comment in my first uh, time to be here, and I really appreciate, I really appreciate being here because um, I know that when uh, we talked, um, things that people don't really think about, what's in the air and what it can do to you, uh, positively and negatively. I, I just had a dear friend uh, die of lung cancer, and um, these are things that the public 
because we can't see it, we don't think about it, what's in the air and what it's doing to us. So I really appreciate this work and letting the public know uh, as much as we can about what the work of the district is and how it's going to contribute to our health and the quality of life. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And I just, uh, go ahead. Mr. Brennan, just one. You know what's funny? When I first came to Ventura County, uh, 19... Blah, blah, blah. I won't tell you, 58 anyway, mm -hmm. and played football, and it was so smoggy, your, you, your lungs hurt. Your lungs used to breathe in, remember that? And you used to hurt. We've come a long, long way from those days when our lungs hurt, when you just to walk and breathe. You know, the days they wouldn't let you play outside, I think that to yeah. stay inside, that's, that's, that's And I just <laughs> wanted to also compliment the public information campaigns that we do do with the Air Pollution Control District. It, they are really superior to anything I've seen from any of the agencies in Ventura County. Just really top-notch stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Receiving files? We'll receiving files, sure. Great. Okay. Second by Member Sharkey. First. Okay, no opposition. Item carries. Uh, 15 is the receiving file, just uh, correspondence. Yeah, motion. Uh, sure. File. Thank you. And I don't, I see a few people have entered the room. Any public comments? Parts? Okay, seeing none, we'll uh, adjourn this meeting. There is a standing committee meeting that uh, will, the standing committee will uh, meet upstairs in the fourth floor conference room. Please. Thank you for making the trip, and I know you were on the advisory board, so...